What's your first response when someone wrongs you? Do you shout out whatever pops in your head? Hey, look where you're going! Or maybe you keep your mouth shut and just give them a glare that could wilt daisies. You might even spend your afternoon thinking up creative ways to get back at them. I could totally empty the ketchup bottle and put in hot sauce, and they'll totally burn their mouth when they eat a burger. <laughs> yeah. When you get hurt, it's really easy to hold on to the pain, sometimes for days or months or even years. You just want to see them pay for what they did. But it's like allowing a bad seed to take root. And if you don't dig out the hurt, it can turn into deeply rooted bitterness. Trouble is, holding on to pain doesn't hurt them. It hurts you. That's where forgiveness comes in. Forgiveness is deciding that someone who has wronged you doesn't have to pay. It is not saying that what that person did is okay, but it says that you're giving payback to God. Forgiveness is a decision and also a process. Sometimes you have to give the situation back to God over and over. But when you trust God for strength to forgive and root out bitterness, you make room for beautiful things to grow. Things like peace, joy, and compassion. And the very first step, ask God to wipe away the wrong things you've done. God will always forgive. Then you can pass that same forgiveness on to those around you. That's why forgiveness is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Yeah. Come on. Let's go. I know I'm going to make mistakes in this life I live, but you never leave me.
Welcome to Creating with John Ross. I'm John Ross. It's funny how that worked out. <laughs> Today we're finishing up our mosaic. It's been a long process, but very rewarding. We'll take one of our happy little circles here and give it a little pat. Thank you, little circle. You're gonna bring joy to so many people. What's that, little circle? You're saying you're glad you're not a square? <laughs> I'm glad you're not a square either, because then you'd be useless. We're gonna place you right here, little friend. Oh, don't you look cheerful. A cheerful little circle. Now I think you just need a couple more friends and we'll be all finished. Hi, how are you? Oh, you're very round today. One more. We're getting so close to the end now, you can feel the excitement from all of our little circle friends. Hi, this looks like fun, Thank you, John. Brandon. We're almost finished with our happy little mosaic here. Oh, do you mind if I no, put Brandon, one No, Brandon, that would be just great. There. That looks happy. So happy. Glimpses of me by John. <laughs> it was an ordinary day. I was about to do another episode of the so-and-so show when Brandon walked in the door. Hey, John. Sorry I'm late. Whoa. How's it going? Whoa. What? Well, I literally just typed, Brandon walked in and then you walked in. Oh, what are you doing? Are you writing a book? Oh, well, maybe. We'll see where it goes. Hey, you should write a mystery. Mysteries always do well. That's a great idea. Yes. You know what? I will think I'll write one of those classic mysteries, you know, from the 1940s. You know, something a, a little more old, you know, so that it... Brandon? <laughs> okay. Uh <clears throat> It was a dark and stormy night. Whoa. Brandon walked in through the door. Hiya, John. What's cracking? <laughs> he took one step and tripped on a roller skate. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? What in the world? Who put this there? Why, I oughta? All right. Oh. Okay. Let's try again. Uh, oh. Brandon walked in through the door holding a freshly baked cake. Hey, John. I baked you a cake. Mmm. There you go. Oh, thank you. Uh huh. Mm hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mmm. <coughs> what kind of cake is that? It's coconut. Don't you like it? No. Thanks. Oh, man. Now, what am I going to do with all this cake? Why did I do that? Who can say? I baked you a cake. <gasps> it's chocolate. Delicious, I bet. Mm-hmm. Thank you very much. I'll finish it later. 
Why? Have, have you got other plans? Hmm. You better believe it. I would do anything for John. <laughs> like buy him chips and other oh. snacks. Yes, I would do anything for John. Even dress up like a cat. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. No. Meow. Yep, yep. <laughs> we got you. <laughs> All right, enough of that. I don't know about you, John, but I am exhausted. And I have no idea why. What? Uh, uh, it's Bible story time with Kellen. You guys have had an interesting day. Not really. Haven't done much. What have we done? You got a story for us today, Kellen? Of course. Seriously, I can't remember anything about this. Then show. take it away. <laughs> you know, there's nothing like being given a do-over, a fresh start, a clean slate, which is what today's Bible story is all about. It is a story about when Jesus was invited to have dinner at a home of a Pharisee named Simon. A Pharisee was an expert in God's law. They loved rules, which is great, but sometimes they thought that they were better than other people. But still, Simon invited Jesus, so Jesus went to dinner at Simon's house. Now, there was a woman in town who had lived a sinful life. She heard Jesus was close by, so she went to the house, found Jesus, and did something a little unusual. She started to clean Jesus' feet. Well, I'm pretty sure they did not have vacuum cleaners, but the woman did sit on the floor and clean Jesus' dirty sandaled feet. And not with a bowl of water and a washcloth, she washed Jesus' feet with her own tears and dried them with her own hair. <gasps> yep, you heard me right with her own hair. And before you wonder if this was a common practice back then, it was not. She also kissed Jesus' feet and poured perfume on them. She was truly honored to be in the presence of Jesus. On the other hand, Simon was not okay with what he saw happening in his house. He said to himself, if Jesus really were a prophet, He'd know the woman touching him was a sinner. So, Jesus told Simon a story. A story about two different people who owed a man money. One owed the man 50 coins, and one owed 500 coins. Neither person had enough money to pay the man back. So, the man let both people go without paying. So whether they owed 50 coins or 500 coins, they were off the hook. They were both forgiven. After the story, Jesus asked Simon, which of the two people would love the man more? The one who owed 50 coins or the one who owed 500? Simon replied, I suppose the one who owed the most money. Yup, good answer. Jesus turned to the woman who had washed his feet and said to Simon, do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water to wash my feet, but she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman has not stopped kissing my feet since I came in. You did not put olive oil on my head but she has poured this perfume on my feet. So I tell you this, her many sins have been forgiven. She has shown that she understands this by her great acts of love. But whoever has been forgiven only a little, loves only a little. Boom. After that, 
Jesus told the woman her sins were forgiven because of her faith. The woman knew what it felt like to truly be forgiven, and she had to show Jesus how unbelievably grateful she was. What'd you think, fellas? Uh, I gotta say, feet always weird me out. <laughs> but her just doing that for Jesus without a second thought of what the other people in the room might think, that's pretty incredible. Yeah, that just proves how grateful she was to be forgiven. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I don't think I'm always that grateful, even though I've been forgiven a lot. Mm. It's true. All of us are a work in progress. We all need forgiveness sometime. Yeah, I need forgiveness every day. Like even today when I was making Brandon dance like a cat. <laughs> you were what? Yeah, that's a great story, Kellen. Thanks, guys. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm. Dance like a cat? Uh, yeah. You, you, you know how sometimes when you type something in a typewriter and the things you type actually start happening. <laughs> That's not a thing. <laughs> what? Reveal the question! Oh, hey, the question is, what does it feel like to be forgiven? Let's find out. <laughs> Brandon, do you forgive me for having a little fun at your expense today? So weird. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I forgive you. <laughs> it feels good. Totally. When you have something hanging over your head that you know you should ask forgiveness mm. for, it, it really does weigh you down. And, and when that weight is lifted, it's an incredible feeling. Yeah. All of us should know what it feels like to be forgiven. When Jesus died on the cross, he paid the price for all of our sins. So be grateful for how loving and how forgiving God is. Yeah, and we'll see you next week for a brand new show. Let me see that thing. Uh-oh. John enters playing the spoons and break dancing. You can take my chips, but you can never take my talkies! Still delicious. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.